Hello everyone, my name is Raven, and welcome to Raven67854 Gaming, and uh, welcome to my GZ Doom tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to set up GZ Doom and the various editors that exist, and create a basic map, and then basically, you know, load it up and walk around, and it's, you know, it's the start, so we need to get all the tools. So, first off, uh, what is GZ Doom? Well, I'll go to the tab over here. GZ Doom is basically a modern remake of the doom engine it has a lot of extra features like 3d floors dynamic lighting i mean you could do physically based lighting there's all sorts of uh, you know the sky is roughly the limit onto what you can do with it now that doesn't mean that it's necessarily the easiest thing to work with you know you will have to have quite a bit of experience and i'm certainly not going to cover on how to set up physically based materials anytime soon um but regardless of that we're going to look at mapping and then way later on down the road if people still like this series then we'll start covering like creating stuff from scratch you know and all sorts of fun stuff okay so what kind of games have been made with gc doom to give you an idea because you can make commercial games so the first one and probably one of the most popular known ones is slacko i think i'm saying that right uh it is downright amazing and really cool of a uh game that's made in cheesy doom i mean look at this this is amazing and you can make full-fledged games by the way just want to say you can make commercial games with gz doom there's a little there's a there's a little bit of caveats to it but they're not really that much of an issue I, if i recall you have to remove like a few files and you're pretty much good to go um so and of course you know you can't use any of doom's assets or anything like that the other one that i want to mention is hands of the necromancy uh, i actually did a video on this one you, i'm gonna put a link to it in the description um and it, it it's a very cool uh game and it has some like neat elements where like you kind of have like a world map and as you travel you can travel back and forth between the levels it's really cool another one is apocalyptic vibe it's kind of got like a stalker-ish kind of vibe to it sort of deal going on there um it's it's also rather neat and it is made completely inside of gz doom and then the other one is lichen thorn 2 um i think there was a first one of this i can't remember i assume there was because this one's like a thorn 2 uh it's just a neat one and it has a very interesting art style to it as well it's very like um almost like nintendo you know ish kind of graphics to me well, that's how it looks to me i mean you know obviously it has more colors and stuff but uh, i i do like the the overall look of it another one is project absentina never heard of this one before but before i did this video i obviously you know searched and uh looked for some games that were made inside of gz doom and this one despite the look actually doesn't look that bad now i don't know if the game is any good because i've never played it or anything um but it's a very interesting take on using the GZ Doom. The last one is Relentless Frontier. And, oh, also, I just want to say all these games are in the description. So if you just want to like, you know, go check them out yourself, you're more than welcome to. And this one looks very, very cool. Um, you know, it's kind of got like a modern newish vibe to it sort of thing. And yeah, I mean, it's amazing. So like I was saying about GZ Doom, it has a bunch of modern features. It supports OpenGL, it supports Vulkan, it supports its own custom software render, and it has a whole host of shader effects and stuff like that. Plus you can add your own, like I was talking about the physically based rendering, like someone did that themselves. And I think they even provided it so you can add it in. So let's go ahead and start getting everything that we need. So in order to follow along with these tutorials, you're gonna need the free Doom game data. And there's a link to it in the description, of course and that's all you'll need for um this part the next part you're going to need is obviously of course you're going to need gz doom so go to zdoom.org go to the download section grab the one for your version we're going to grab the windows version the next thing you're going to need and this is where things get kind of tricky so the, there are kind of like two main editors for um you know, GC Doom. One of them is the Ultimate Doom Builder, as you see in front of me. And the other one is Slade. And Slade works on all platforms Windows, Mac, and Linux. Ultimate Doom Builder only works on Windows, but 
if I I haven't done it in a really long time, but you can get it to work under Wine um, on Linux, for example. And Slate is catching up in terms of features very, very, very fast, which to me is really nice because I would like for Slade to have all the features of Ultimate Doom Builder. And it does have a lot. Like here lately, they've been like really pumping them out, um, which is extremely nice. Because like, for example, GZ Doom Builder, sorry, GZ Doom supports 3D models. So you don't just have sprites and stuff. You can also have full-fledged 3D models within your scene, which is very cool. And definitely not supported by the original Doom Engine, by the way. You have to use GZ Doom for that. And Slade, however, and the reason we're going to be using Slade is because Slade is not just a map editor. It also has tools for scripting and also for building your WAD slash pack files, which Ultimate Doom Builder does not have. So this is one reason why I'm really excited for Slade to finally get all of the features that Ultimate Doom Builder has, because then I can just, you know... Then you can just use Slade and you don't have to, you know, kind of swap between the two because Ultimate Doom Builder really doesn't have scripting. I know that there's an option for it, but I've never really gotten that thing to work. And also it doesn't support pack or wad file editing at all because everyone just uses Slade. Okay, so let's go on ahead and grab. I'm going to grab the 64 bit version of this version here. Now, the nice thing is, is it does automatically update. And for Slade, uh, you just want to grab whichever one you want. I'm going to grab the seven zip version of the. Of Slade. Okay, so now that we've done that, you need to make a folder somewhere on your computer. It doesn't matter where you do it, you just have to make one. And what we're going to do, as I call this Doom, because you know, Doom, uh, I'm going to open up GZ Doom Builder, or sorry, I keep calling it GZ Doom Builder, I apologize. I'm going to open up the GZ Doom uh, zip file, and I'm just going to drag everything over into here. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab FreeDoom and I'm just going to take the WAD files out of FreeDoom and I'm just going to plonk them right into here. And then I'm going to open up Slade and I'm going to make a folder for Slade and I'm just going to throw it in here. And now I'm going to make one for Ultimate Doom Builder, so UDB. And I'm going to just put it right on in here. Okay, so now we have everything that we need for, um, you know, actually map editing. So uh, I'm going to launch Slade here. And this is Slade. Now, we're not going to cover Slade in this particular tutorial, um, but I just want to launch it just to, you know, always make sure your tools work and launch. I mean, I knew it would, but it never hurts you to double check. And yeah, everything works. So like, for example, we could create a new archive and there's a bunch of different ones, like a zip archive, a quick pack, you know, whatever it is you wish to make. And you can add in all your files and all your data. We're going to cover this stuff when we actually get to like adding in custom assets or even editing pre-existing WAD or pack files. And we're just going to close it because, you know, we don't really want to save anything. No, we don't want to save anything. Okay, so we could launch GZ Doom here and we could just say launch in OpenGL, launch in full screen. And it's super loud. Okay, it's it's super loud. Like, whew. Yeah, uh, I'm going to put that at like one because I don't really care if it's uh, how loud it really is. Okay, so there's a lot of different things we can change in here. So I'm going to go into full options menu. And then I am going to go into display options here. I'm going to go into hardware. All right, we're going to go just start at the top. So there's a whole bunch of stuff now. I recommend that you change this to however you want. I'm going to set multi-sampling to four so there's no aliasing because this particular machine that I'm recording on only has a 1080p screen. So, you know, it's not as nice as the workstation. And then we'll go to texture options and I am going to set them to none, trilinear and 16x anisotropic filtering. This will give you a more traditional uh, doom look, which I prefer. And for dynamic lighting, I'm just going to set this to high for soft shadows and i'm just gonna turn all this stuff on 
because we might use it later. We might also turn it on and off. And like I said, there is an enormous amount of options in here. Okay, so now that we've kind of got a basic setup here, I'm just going to hit yes to close it. And we're going to hit that any button there to quit. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create a basic, uh, you know, level in which to, you know, actually, well, make a level like, you know, we need to make a map. So we're going to launch Builder. And believe it or not, when it hits this screen, it is actually done. The very first time I ever launched this funny story. Uh, yeah, I was sitting here. I was like, when's this thing done? And then I was like, oh, yeah, it's 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 actually done already. So we're going to make a new map. And for the you have different types of game configurations. And we're going to select GZ Doom. And there's a there's a really important aspect here. So as you can see in the end in these parentheses, it says the Doom format, the Hexen format, the Doom format. We want to use the Universal Doom map format, which I believe is what UDMF stands for. And this format supports everything. 3D models, lighting, all the good stuff. Um, now, again, if you were trying to make like a traditional Doom map, you would pick this one. If you wanted to make a GZ Doom map that uses the Hexen format, you pick that one. Or if you want to use Boom, you can pick that one. But we're using GZ Doom, and we're going to use this. For script type, all the others, irrelevant. Z Doom, ACS, only one that matters. And for the map name, we're just going to call it Map01. Now, if we were to open this right now, it would just spit out some errors, and nothing would be there. So what we want to do is we want to add a resource, and then we want to load. And I'm going to go to where I have this particular folder here. And we'll go into our Doom. And we want to select our free Doom1.wad file. And then we'll hit OK. And then we'll add another resource. And then we'll load our second free Doom.wad. And then we'll hit OK. And then we'll hit OK because we, you know, we want to make our map. Now, again, you can save it however you would like. Um, you can also use long texture names. So, like, you know, Doom is very limited to, like, the, the old DOS days of the 8.3 principle. So, you know eight characters for the file name and three for the extension. And so, you know, if you want some more modernness to it, you can use long texture names and it won't truncate anything or anything like that. Uh, and we're not going to bother with strictly loading patches because it's an older thing and we're not going to deal with it, which is nice. See, using GZ Doom comes with a lot of extra advantages and we don't really care about that because we're using free Doom anyway. And I just said, okay. Okay, and now you're met with this beautiful interface of what does all this do? Now, much like all my other tutorials, I'm not going to cover every living thing because I'd be here for like, you know, two hours. Uh, so we're going to learn it as we go and as we use it. So don't be, you know, don't don't get concerned, you know, if you if you just kind of look at this and go, oh, my God, what what is all of this? Don't it's OK to get your breath. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit control shift D, which will put us in draw rectangle mode, or you can come over here and select this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a really small room. That's 250. Actually, you know, what? I don't really like that. I'm going to right click and then hit control shift D again. I'm going to go three out from it. There we go. And then we'll just left click. Okay. And you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out and you can hold space to uh, pan around the screen. Another thing that you can do and something that you can accidentally do is if you hit Q, you go into a 3D view where you can select uh, walls, ceilings, objects, so forth with left mouse button. And you can left mouse button again to, uh, you know, deselect them. They'll blink and flash red when you've selected them. Now you can hit Q to get out of it. And to move around, you're probably thinking WSAD, right? Because, you know, that is such a standard. Nope. They use the ESDF principle. So ESDF is the way that you change it. And I've never bothered to change it because when I use this tool, I'm just used to it now. But you can go into preferences and change all this if you like. And we'll just hit Q again to get out of it. Okay. So how do we actually like run a map? Because if we were to try to run this map right now, it 100% would not work. Well, let's take a look at that. So over here, you have a tool called things mode and things are like entities and hammer or quake, you know, whatever, what have you. So we'll select thing and we'll just click it. We'll just right click it somewhere. And again, you know, you can select a whole bunch of different stuff. There's a lot of different stuff from dynamic lights to teleporters to the player starting positions. We're going to use the player start. 
and we're just going to hit OK. And then you can use right mouse, much like how you created it, to drag it around. Now this lovely little arrow here shows the direction of the uh, like that the character will be facing. So like if we want to like swap it, we can change it this way. And as you can see, it'll now be pointing this way. We can make it go this way. Let's make it go this way. We'll hit OK. OK, so now we've done everything that's the bare, bare minimum requirement to make a GZ Doom game or a game in GZ Doom or a map, I should say, I guess, to be more specific. And now we'll just save our map. So we're going to save map. And now it's going to ask us, where do we want to save our map? OK, well, we want to save our map in. I'm going to make a folder called Maps. And it's going to make it inside of a WAD file. Now, again, Slade is going to come and play here. Because if you've ever played Doom, you don't have 50 different WAD files. And we're just going to give it, you know, our name of map01.wad. And we're going to hit save. And it'll take a second, and then it'll save. Now, we can test our map. And you can click the drop down, and you can select the engine that it's tied to, um, you know, the difficulty and so forth. And if we hit play, you'll notice that it went on ahead and ran. And everything works perfectly. You can look up and down. Everything works. Now... Why did it work? Well, the reason it worked is because I already have, you know, GC Doom installed elsewhere and it's using a, you know, local configuration. Well, that's not what we need to be doing here. So we're going to go to game configuration. And then we want to go to testing. And as you have all probably noticed, you probably got a pop up that is literally this. So you want to select our engine. You want to, you know, add a new engine, give it a name GC Doom. And then you want to browse to, you know, wherever it happens to be. I'm going to leave mine set up the way that it is because, you know, that's this is the version I already have configured. And then what we're going to do is you could you could enable custom parameters if you wanted to. We're not going to do that right now. Uh, it'll it'll automatically feed in everything that's necessary. That's a way down the road sort of deal. Let's first make maps before we start dealing with all the complexities of everything. Okay. Okay, so if you do all of that, and then, you know, hit OK to save it, 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 I think it auto launches at that point, I cannot remember. But either way, if it doesn't, just click the little play button up there. And then you have it. And there you go. You can now walk around, you can do all sorts of fun stuff, you can sprint. We're basically stuck in a super small, tiny little cubicle. It's very claustrophobic. But it has like an old school look, you know, you get up to it, you can see the textures, there's no texture filtering. Uh, but there is, you know, distant mit maps and anastropic filtering, so you don't get that really harsh, disgusting noise. But you know, you get you get all the benefits of not having, you know, filtering on your texturing, and you don't have the nasty mess off in the distance that just looks like a noisy mess. Okay, so that is that for this video. In the next video, what we will do is we will cover more advanced. Um, topics and and features you know as we go um so in the next video we'll probably cover the draw lines mode or something like that i haven't truly decided but tune in every sunday for a brand new video on making maps and mods with gz doom i appreciate your support if you would really like to support this channel you can become a member uh, you get early access to videos, so like, you know, I'm probably going to record these videos in advance. Well, you can get early access to them. Uh, just hit the join button or link in the description for, it says member, you can join it. It's super cool. Uh, and your support is very much, very, very much appreciated. Uh, the other thing is, of course, if you run into any issues or, you know, just want to join an awesome community, uh, you can join the Discord, and there's a lot of really great stuff there. As well, one other thing that I would like to point out, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. And, of course, don't forget, hit that bell. Have a good one, everyone. I'll see you all in the next one.